Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to take a look at the LG 360 cam. I'm gonna do an unboxing and an initial setup. I'm gonna set it up on an iOS and on an Android device so I can give you guys the experience of how to set it up on both. But more specifically, how does this stack up as a 360 cam? Let's check it out. Here we have the box itself. It's very small. It's actually minimalistic. We do have the LG Friends logo. Uh, now, this was announced with LG, the LG G5 specifically, and I guess it's meant to be used with the LG G5, but it also works with other devices. So you don't have to have the G5 to be able to use this. Um, on the back itself, it just gives us some more information. It says easy capture, three mic, 5.1 channel surrounding a 60 megapixel, 360 view, which means it's about, I think it's two eight megapixel cameras. Um, 2K, 360 view again, of course, support for Android and iOS. And we're going to test that out today. Uh, various capturing modes, of course, 360 and 180, um, and very, very easy here. Uh, and let's go ahead and unlock it. Um, it's very nice. It's actually extremely compact. Uh, I am really having a... <laughs> It's very, very small, very easy, uh, very simple in the sense of how it's set up. Um, I'll go ahead and do a real quick tour of the unit itself. Uh, let's put it down here. Uh, last but not least, uh, we do have a uh, US, okay, so USB type A to USB type C connector, so we will charge it. So this is supporting USB type C. So looking back and focusing on the case itself, we do have a case and this looks kind of like a hood, but it also doubles as a stand. So it turn it on because I think I pushed the button by mistake. Um, so you do have the ability of using it as a stand. You're holding it directly and turning on the camera, uh, pressing the two buttons on the side here. These are the release buttons and this will sit on the side. Of course, you can always just put it on top. That's just depending on your preference, but it will stand up on its own straight. Um, and again, you have two cameras, one on both sides, and that's how you get the 360 effect. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just push it down, get it out. Uh, let's power it down, uh, I think. Press and hold. Okay, so we have a, a release button on the front. We have a microphone. At one of the cameras in the front, there's a lot of plastic that's on top of this. Let's go ahead and remove some of it. That was a lot of plastic. So we'll put that on the side. Uh, looking at the actual unit itself, it's pretty simple. We do have a regular threaded. This is if you want to mount it to a monopod or something to the effect that it will mount on that pretty good. Um, I actually just brought mine in just in case. Uh, I have my desktop mount for one of my webcams and uh, it will mount straight to it and then you can adjust it, put it on. Of course, this is not the best view for you guys, but definitely very nice and it does hold very good. Uh, on the bottom, we do have uh, an SD card port. So you're able to put in an SD card and then just put it in. I keep turning it on, that's a really messed up process. The button's very sensitive. I do have one of my SD cards put in. We have the USB Type-C connector on the bottom and then you're able to basically format the SD card using the application itself. Closing it, very nice, very tight. There's a couple of screws here, no additional screws. We have one camera, two camera, and we'll go ahead and turn it on. We're gonna experience it using on both on an Android and, uh, sorry, on an iOS, iPhone 6S Plus, and on an Android, this is the HTC 10. Um, I wanna make sure that you guys are aware of, first and foremost, you do definitely wanna download and install the application. It's called the LG 360 Cam Manager. Download it from the Play Store or from the App Store and then install it. Once you open it up, click open. It's gonna come in and says, yes, play with friends. You say start. You have to accept the, uh, the terms and say okay. It's gonna ask you that it wants to turn on Bluetooth. You wanna say yes. And at this time, it's gonna start trying to look for and the actual, see the 360 cam. Now I found it right away, even though the camera is not on, uh, because I was pushing it on and off, it does actually, it is on, but it's in sleep mode. Uh, pressing it and it'll try to basically prepare to connect with it. It's gonna launch Wi-Fi and then connect directly to the camera via Wi-Fi and that's how the connection is contained, sustained. It's initialized by Bluetooth but contained within uh, Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna close it here and show it to you guys real quick on the iOS side. Very, very similar. I already installed the application um, and I'll go ahead and go back. The interface is pretty simple. Once you're connected, you'll notice that it has Wi-Fi connected. I can go directly into the camera. It says, please note, camera is unavailable. So what you want to do here again, you do search, you find it, you click it. On iOS, it's a little different than Android. Um, and in the sense of that is you have to go into your settings, go to Wi-Fi, we're going to go here. You find the LG uh, 105, you click it and it connects. Once you connect it, you can go back into the camera itself, go out, and now you'll see the battery percentage is showing. It says 360 cam. I'm able to go in directly into it. Uh, to use, a, use an SD card, and I guess I did not reinsert it correctly, uh, but you can see here that the camera is on. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the table, set it up, and you're able to use it. So I'm gonna power it off, or actually, let's see here. Do we still have the SD card in? Yes, we do. Yep. 
and you notice the, the buttons here started became lighter, so which means we'll be able to actually use it. Uh, I'm going to take a real quick video. Well, let's start it up. So it does a live feed. So as you notice here, I'm actually looking at the device itself. It's recording. Um, once it starts recording, you'll notice that there's a red button that starts flashing. The button itself is on. I'm going to put it straight on the table and then just keep it on for a few seconds. Stop it. And then we're going to go directly into the gallery itself. Now, I can go straight into the gallery after the video is saved and I can play it. Uh, but it actually has to download it, so I'll give it a few seconds. And it does it pretty quickly using the Wi-Fi as that's the closest proximity to it. And what it does is it'll save it on the camera roll using uh, the directly here on the iPhone. And on the Android side, it just saves it into your, uh, there's a folder that it creates for itself. And once it's done, we'll be able to play it and we play the video. Now, so it does a live feed, so as you notice here, I'm, I'm going to lower the volume. This is again what we just filmed. And the reason why I wanted to show you guys here is I'm able to actually, you notice here, you can see my room. You can see my camera set up right there, uh, different areas. Of course, very, very nice. We'll go back. And I'm actually gonna go back one more time. And so we have access to a settings tab, which we're able to go in and set it up. You do have the ability of turning off the sound that's on it. The Wi-Fi password is the ability to set a different password than the default one. And just a reference, the default password on this is 00 and the last six numbers of the serial number that's listed here on the side. So in case you ever forget it, that's how you get in. Storage, it says 14.86 gigabytes left. It's a 16 gig card, 73% battery. Auto sleep is at, set at two minutes and I'm leaving it there. Um, and this name, of course, named the actual application. So software update, uh, it says you do want to connect it to the computer and use the LG Bridge application. Uh, device information says model is the LG R105. Software version is R10510D. And of course, gives us the information there. Terms of use, open source license, of course. And then last but not least, uh, no downloading files. So we'll be able to basically download them if we need to. Going into the gallery, it gives us two galleries. There's the one on the phone. And I'll go back here. This is the videos that I've downloaded. This is the one we were watching just a second ago. Very, very nice. Again, it does give us the ability to basically kind of sh shoot the video as we want it. Um, and you notice here that it doesn't actually show you the actual LG cam. You can see that it's in my hand, but it's not really showing in the video. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit pause, go back. Um, and of course, you can download and share from here. Uh, if you're in the camera itself, you want to download another video, just press and hold on it. And, oh, that was actually a video, uh, a picture. Let's say we want to be able to download this one. Uh, I'll be able to press it. It'll say preparing to play and it'll start playing the video. This was uh, a test video that I did at the office and uh, very easy. Now, going into the camera and the controls, uh, it's asking us if we want to do location services. I'm going to say no. Uh, the controls are pretty much identical on both systems. This is um, iOS, of course, so you have the ability of controlling your auto settings. This is becomes makes it into a manual camera. You're able to control the white balance, the uh, aperture, the ISO, the shutter speed, and of course, uh, just different things. You can also go to between 180 and 360. So at this point, I'm running it using the front camera. You can see I'm right there. Uh, and I'm able to go back and turn on the 360 and it'll go back into spherical view. You can't actually pan when you're in it, uh, only when you see the video afterwards. Uh, of course, you can you can change the back camera to the front camera, and that's what it's doing is switching between the two. Uh, we can go back. We'll go back to auto modes. We have a couple of uh, options here. We have the ability of changing the camera itself. We have a 16 megapixel camera, the 8 megapixel, 5 megapixel, and then we have the resolutions here. Uh, currently, the highest one is 2560 by 1280. Then we go to 1920 by 960. Uh, of course, we have the ability of doing a time uh, a timer to be able to turn on the camera. Uh, the field of view. Well, let's go ahead and go back here. Go back. And I'm going to go back to the camera. Uh, you have the ability to go into timer. Uh, the field of view itself, you can limit it. Uh, you have, of course, the location. And then 5.1 channel if you want to change that. So uh, we'll go ahead here, two-point channel. And let's go ahead and take it back to 5.1. And, well, actually, let's do this. When we go into the 180 view, go back into the mode, you're able to basically change the view, field of view. You can shorten the view, makes it smaller, make it very, very small. You can see it zooms in. Um, otherwise, it just takes in the picture of the entire thing and we'll go back to the 360 view. Very easy, very simple, and of course we have the video and we have the camera options. We'll go put it this way. At this point I turned it on. I'm using the front-facing uh, side of this. This is 180, not 360. Uh, again, same place. I'm still driving, going up the hill, going up to the freeway. I wanted to show basically the difference obviously between these, just using half of it as opposed to using the full thing, and how the audio would compare using the actual cup as a holder in the car. Uh, again, there's a lot of more ambient sound here going around, so you're going to get a lot more sound coming in. But you lose that 360 effect, which means you can't turn around, you can't pan. So that's one thing I'm going to include in the video. Obviously, this will be able, well, this can work in the video since it's you know, 
not 360. Uh, and I'm going to link for you guys in the description as a test uh, the 360 video I just did prior to this just a second ago, uh, showing you the example of what I would use a camera like this as far as 360. Experiencing events, life events, going to an uh, actual place, let's say to a beach or a forest, if you're driving here, uh, in a place where you've never been before, and you want to be able to revisit that and have an experience where you can see everything. And of course, the clarity of the picture in this. So I've had the unit itself for about a day or so, and I had a chance to take it out yesterday to take some videos. I took some videos with my son in the car. I took some videos while I was um, at the office just to try to basically try it on. It's very simple. Uh, using it right out of the box, you don't even have to have a device connected to it to be able to take videos. Uh, it does work without it. You just have no way of seeing what you're taking till after you're done. Uh, but because it has such a wide angle lens, which is similar to the eight megapixel camera that we have on the LG G5, you're pretty much in view as long as you have it in front of you and it will capture pretty well. Um, as long as you didn't have the zoomed in functionality turned on in advance. So turning it on is very easy. Uh, well, let's press and hold. So it's off right now and I'm not using it. Any of the devices are connected to it. I'll just basically press and hold it, turn it on. I did, I did turn off the sound. Normally it would make a little chirp. It does turn on automatically to 360 and it's pretty simple. If I want to take a picture, I just hold it in front of me and it took a picture. Um, if it had sound on, it would make that sound for us. If it uh, Obviously it doesn't right now. And if I want to take a video of a sound thing, I just press and hold it, three seconds. And what we notice here is actually is as a blinking red light. That's the easy way to see it. And then once you know that, that pretty much is done. You can set it where you want and it will do the 360 video and the mics are on. I left it at 5.1 mic, uh, 5.1 channel mic because I feel like it does a better job capturing the audio from all directions as you don't want it to be just front facing. But if you're doing 180, of course, it disables uh, any functionality to have 5.1 unless you really need it. Um, 2.4, uh, two channels I think are usually pretty good. And then pre pressing in, uh, again, we'll turn it off again. Uh, accessing the data itself is pretty simple. You can take out the SD card and then put it into your device and transfer it. It does connect via Wi-Fi and it's pretty quick. Uh, very easy, very simple. This isn't the entire review of the unit itself as I still want to be able to basically experience and see how it functions outside in environments where there's obviously a much better uh, situation where we can test out the light, the, uh, the different lighting environment. It did have some options to go into low light, uh, woods, different things as far as shooting modes. Uh, and of course we do have manual mode which is also a very nice thing to be able to experience. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you very much for the support. Uh, hopefully this was not too long for you guys. I'm going to try to edit it at the end and make sure that it's actually uh, contained within a certain uh, part. So again, like and subscribe. Thank you for the support. I will see you guys in the next one. This is the LG G5. It's here. I finally have it from T-Mobile. I did a pre-order and a front-facing camera. Fingerprint sensor is at the bottom. And again, this isn't a button. It's